Iceland, a country like no other, emerged in the center of the North Atlantic before it was settled over a thousand years ago by Norwegian Vikings. Imagine 300,000 people living on a territory as big as France. The island itself has been shaped by volcanic and geothermal forces active now as ever, making it a site of incomparable majesty. Among this country's natural treasures, Osterland, also known as the Eastern Region, is a huge valley formed over millennia by glacial erosion and through which the Lagerfloet River meanders, fed directly from Iceland's largest glacier. The central part of the river widens at the city of Eulstador, forming the lake called Logorin, or Lagerfloet, which at first glance has the appearance of being just another tranquil body of water. However, this large lake with a depth of over 100 meters or 320 feet hides a mystery. For several centuries, a giant worm known as Lagerfloetermurin was sighted in the lake. Living witnesses number in the dozens. Recently, one of them even managed to capture images of the creature. They saw something move up and down, humps or something. People have been seeing these kinds of humps coming up from the, from the lake surface. Well, we have the records of uh, some kind of a monster living in the lake. Uh, the first record is from 1345. Many hundred years ago, the, the worm was believed to be very dangerous. I think there's a creature there. There is something alive down there. I always have a camera in my car when I travel around the lake if I would see something. I would, I would describe it as something very huge. It's uh, enormous in size. I mean, every child here in the area can tell you the story about the monster. I think the last of Solomon is really big, ugly, and scary. I was here in the house. It was like a little bit of 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 a little bit the worm killed by poison or, or fired people. Do you believe in the, in the worm? Yes, absolutely, I believe in it. I, I know it exists. The Lagerfloter Muren lives in Lagerfloat, the third largest lake in Iceland, spanning 53 square kilometers or 20 square miles. Filled with sediment from the glacier that feeds it, the lake's gray color and opacity have helped keep this mystery alive. This lake is, uh, it's deep. It goes down to at least 112 meters. The glacier dug it down in the, the ice, ice age. It has a very, very much volume uh, because, well, the surface of the lake, the altitude of the surface of the lake is about 20 meters above sea level. But the bottom of the lake, well, where it is steepest, it is more than 112 meters deep. So we, have, we have this 80 meters below sea level of the lake, and that is, that is rather unusual in Iceland. It, it's not transparent, as, as many, many lakes are, because it's glacier water. So I believe it, there is a creature down there. And on the bottom of the lake, also because of the glacier river that runs into it, we have, have a very thick layer of uh, clay, of sediment from, from the centuries 
that the glacier rivers have, yeah, washed into it. When glaciers melt in Icelandic mountains, rivers filled with sediment carve a path to the ocean. Most of these rivers are not navigable because of the violence of the current, but there are exceptions like the Laker float. Among the residents who live around the erosion basin, the famous Lager Float Lake, everyone knows at least one person who has seen the terrible creature emerge from its surface. The people has to that has told me the, the story of the worm are people I trust very much. My neighbor, Valdemar, he's a very down-to-earth person. And uh, he, was, he was working with several other, uh, other men, uh, putting a telephone cable in the lake, uh, and they had a lot of trouble with the worm because he he bit the telephone cable. It was totally unexplainable how it could be twisted so much because it was so strong that uh, they thought it was impossible and they, the, te the technicians there, they, they just had no explanation of it other than this, this very good expl explanation that it had been in contact with the monster. And the, con and the monster didn't like this cable to go over its back. Very young by the standards of Earth's timeline, Iceland emerged from the bottom of the Atlantic some 20 million years ago as the result of volcanic eruptions. Inhabitants live under a constant threat from 130 active volcanoes, which may explain why this state is the least densely populated country in Europe, with only three people per square kilometer. We are here in Iceland, actually in the Easter, eastern part of Iceland, or East Iceland as we call it, and this, uh, this part of Iceland is uh, renowned for a very good weather. Most Icelanders know it for uh, that they want to come here for summer holidays because of the good weather. We are here in the valley of, of Fljotstalur, or the Fljotstalur Valley, and uh, through it runs this river, which is a glacier river coming from all the way from the Vatnajökull Glacier. And so that runs here into the river, and, and the rivers run into the lake Lagerfljot, which is actually a, a river all the way to the ocean, but, uh, well, a river lake. Well, we have the records of uh, some kind of a monster living in the lake. Uh, the first record is from 1345. So it's quite quite old, and it's mentioned actually in in all the all the annals or the chronicles of Iceland through the centuries. Some sightings every century. Uh, we have very uh, well written annals through the centuries, and there you can uh, read about the worm that has been uh, been seen various places in the lake and and by whom and and when and how. The presence of religious missions allowed Iceland to keep a fairly accurate record of its history. Icelandic annals make explicit mention of the appearance of a monster here and there over the centuries, beginning in 1345. I was uh, surprised to see how much was written about it. We have a lot of, of descriptions of old parishes in Iceland, 
that also tell us about the life of the people and the, and the nature. And even there, you have several times stories about the worm. Mainly, well, people at least tried to connect it with that, okay, if the monster was seen here at the Lake Lagerfljot, people could expect something very dreadful to happen in the nature. Some eruptions, uh, earthquakes, or a very hard winter following. So it uh, was this belief that it occurred only when something dreadful was going to happen. We have a tale about the origin of this monster, uh, this beautiful little tale about the, about the girl and the gold ring. Well, the legend about the Lagerfljotsormur is very, very old, and it, it, it's in every folk tale uh, collection you, you have in Iceland. Once I was a little girl, and her mother gave her a little golden ring. And she put the gold in a box, and she was told to put a little worm under the gold, and then it would grow. So she put the worm on the gold, hoping it, the gold would grow. But uh, the golden grow just the worm. It was a giant worm, and she was and she was so afraid, and the, the, she threw the box in the lake. And then it came, became this monster that uh, attacked farmers and and uh, destroyed the harvest for the for the farmers. Icelanders asked some. Fins to Fins to come and help us. They came and they tell that they met this big monster out close to the sea that was like a big seal. And then they met this big skate with this, I think, nine tails with poison claws. And one of the Fins, he got hurt by this poison claws. So he had to stop. And the name of that place is, is Finnstadanes. It means where the Finn stopped. So the story lives in the names of the surroundings. It is said that the, the Finns, the magicians from, from North Norway that came here, or from Lapland, that they managed, after a very hard struggle, they managed to chain it down on the head and the tail. So for that reason, you only see the humps coming up. Well, it has been kept alive because people has been seeing it so often through the, through the centuries. We have the same descriptions from people that, well, even not have read the tale. According to legend, an evil worm thrown into the lake slowly grew into a terrifying giant monster. Skoli Gunnarsson is the director of the cultural center of the region. He has dedicated part of his life to preserving the myth of the Lagerflotermuren and cataloging its appearances from oldest to newest. This is actually the first map that was made of, of Iceland where it is, well, a little bit similar to how it really looks like. Uh, with all the fjords and, and, and the peninsulas. And uh, so there is, uh, about the Lagerfljot Lake, it's written uh, a kind of a warning that says something like this, that uh, in this lake there is a living creature, a uh, big creature that uh, occurs when some dreadful things are going to happen. A dangerous monster, actually, it says there in the Latin. So... It is written there, and it was copied then to other, other uh, maps of Iceland for centuries. When walking along the lake, Skuli cannot help but scan the horizon. Many witnesses claim to have seen the monster while they were driving their vehicle. In response, Skuli has installed information signs in areas where the creature has been thought to emerge. This is actually an information board put up by the 
the, the Worm Associ Association, and uh, it uh, it's explains a little bit the story behind the behind the Worm, but mainly it's it's pointing out the places where something peculiar has been seen, and we are just taking out few places where we have the descriptions from from written papers from the annals, from the chronicles of uh, some peculiar sightings. Well, we can, we can, for example, take this, the triangle with the, with the letter D. That is, that is a sighting from 1965, when the staff here working in the forestry, in the forest, in the Hadlonstad forest, they saw uh, the worm, or at least they thought they saw the worm, and uh, they actually went all the way, well, they saw it there, and they went all the way to here, where we are standing now, and there, they, there it disappeared. It, uh, it seemed to be swimming. It seemed to be swimming up, upstream. And they were coming some humps up, but when they got here, uh, at this place where, where it, it's a very good panorama over the lake, they, it, it disappeared. These forest workers were under orders from Siguldor Blondal, who led the National Forest Office. His daughter Sigrun, a historian, has pulled archives from the time period to try to understand what happened. I think it was in 1962 that my father was looking uh, out uh, of the window uh, where he lived, and he, suddenly he saw something rise from the lake and he called my, my cousin, that was there too, and my brother. They saw something move up and down, humps or something, move up and down for 10 minutes, and they all uh, three watched it through the window, very clearly. And my pa father is a, he's a scientific person. He's very pragmatic. He was a, a forest warden. So it was very clear to him that it was a worm he saw. And he has, he's, never, he's never denied that. He's, he's always convinced that he saw the worm. Yeah. 
In 2012, a creature that looks like a snake is filmed swimming against the current upstream of the lake just outside the house of a sheep farmer. With the help of his nephew who explained how to work the camera, this farmer managed to capture some very disturbing images. And the telephone rings and, and it's my uncle telling me that uh, the live lotus worm is uh, trying to swim ashore. And I think to myself that this is probably just some debris floating in the river and I just tell him to take pictures of it. And he wants me to help him to take a video of it. That was how he was able to capture video of the thing. Ringdi í sjóvarsréttamannin og ætla að fá hann til að taka mynd af þessu fyrirbæri en þá var hann í frígi. Og ég áttur um myndavél en kunni ekki á hana. Og hann kendi mér í gegnum síman á vélina. Og ég tók mynd af þessu fyrirbæri þarna í Janni sem að ég tel og mun halda mig við að hafi verið ormurinn eða þá afkvæmi ormsins. They weren't very interested. At first, they asked me to send them the video, but they did not uh, put it on the 7 o'clock news in television. They, they only put it on the web. And uh, a few days later, uh, the editor of the web, Roof.is, calls me up and tells me that uh, the web is almost crashing because thousands of Japanese people are watching the video. And so then we realized that maybe this was something big. And uh, then we did a television news story on the video, but the video and the worm was not the main thing. The main thing was the attention that the video had gotten from Japan and also from millions of people that had watched it on YouTube. In a few days, millions of users from around the world share the link and look at the images captured by the farmer. But even so, some of the locals remain wary. The first reaction uh, here in the area was, okay, this is this is something, this is some stunt. They've been planting this there in the river and, and making this look like a monster or something like that. But uh, I knew, of course, that that's, that couldn't be the fact. I mean, he wasn't even able to be ready with the camera. So after the video got so famous online, uh, Camera crews and newsrooms from around the world started sending people to Iceland and uh, at times it was uh, almost crowded here with uh, reporters and I was constantly answering questions, helping people out, uh, directing people who to talk to. Uh, I was busy because of it and uh, my uncle as well, he was very happy. Suddenly he was uh, world famous and the farmers from uh, around, they were envious and he was the uh, talk of the town. Já, ég, ég tel mig með góðri samvisku geta trúað á lagafsjósar minn. Eftir þetta þú hefur endar alltaf trúað á hann. Ég er búin að sjá ár minn, taka mynd af honum. Og því ætti, því ætti menn ekki geta trúað á ár minn. Jafnvel þó menn hafi ekki séð hann. Men tror nog att Gud har men har med sig han allt. A country of legends, Iceland has been the land of elves and trolls since the passage of the Vikings in the Middle Ages. But the Lagerflöter Mjörin is something else. The legend of the worm is, I think, more alive in our in our our, our thoughts than than maybe the elves and trolls. You look at the elves and trolls more more like a folk tale. Maybe you know the Icelanders, they believe in elves, they believe in trolls, they believe in hidden people and hidden things, and some people, they see it. And they believe that they see something. If it's only in their head or if they are really seeing something, I, I can't tell. But, but uh, my father has seen the worm in Laraflot and my brother has seen it. And uh, my neighbor has seen it, so... So it's it's you 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 don't uh, it's hard to deny the legend uh, the the story when when people stand before you uh, in front of you and tell you that they have seen the worm. Yeah, we are all of, so now we are all of true. Ah, 
ormurinn væri hérna, nákvæmlega ormurinn væri í klótinu. En eftir að sé þetta þá bara rúmar því enn frekar. Það sé þarna. Ó já, það hefur breytt kannski þá neika. Það sá færist bara frekar. Ég er allan með dreymir að geta um þetta. Það er svona, ég er bara að hugsa þeim út í þetta svona. Og svo horfi ég oftast svona þarna lengra á það sem þetta var svona. In recent years, several theories have been advanced to explain what the dozens of witnesses believe they saw in the Lagerfloat Lake. Skarfedin Porrison is a biologist at the University of Iceland. He studies reindeer populations and is intimately familiar with the lake, which he encounters on a daily basis as part of his research. And although he remains skeptical, his camera is never far away. So when I, I drive around the lake, I always have the camera because I'm always thinking about seeing something that could be related to uh, Lagerfjord's worm sighting, something like that. And, but I'm not expecting to see a live creature. Although some people talk about that the creature is somewhere between the real world and the spiritual world. I don't believe that a real creature exists, but I believe that many people, they sense or feel something that they say is a creature. I can't believe it because uh, the creature have to eat, you have to breath, it have to breathe, and I don't think it's, uh, uh, it's an environment for creature to do that in this lake. If it's a fish-like creature, it has gills. But if it's a, something like a reptile, like Nessie in Scotland, uh, Nessie is, be, people that believe in Nessie believed it was a, a plesiosaurus, a reptile. But they became extinct 60 million years ago. The oldest rock in Iceland is only about 15 million years ago, old. And the lake is, is, is young, so it's difficult to, to see what kind of creature should live in the lake. It would seem, therefore, to be impossible for a giant creature to survive in Lagerfloat Lake. But thanks to the high quantity of sediment and glacial debris found in the lake, conducting a proper survey of what exactly is in the water is difficult. The water running into it is a glacial water, so there's a lot of floating sediment. The lake is go down to more than 100 meters, and the, the sediment is very thick. Uh, there it's 100 meters thick, and in the sediment we have, uh, we have vegetation coming from the woods on the sides of the lake. This vegetation trapped in sediment ferments in the depths of the lake and can release pockets of gas that then rise to the lake's surface. So maybe we have uh, some small earthquake or something happen and, and the bubble goes up and, it, and then they look like a hunchback on the, on the water. Gas sometimes comes up uh, from the bottom of the lake like it's erupting. Gas can erupt from the bottom of the lake, so it looks like uh, something is rising from the lake, but it's actually just air and leaves and debris. If you go back, I think some four or five hundred years ago, the uh, narrow-minded public, people, when they see something strange, like uh, in, this, in, in this lake, we, the worm is not the only creature here. There's a, a big seal monster out there. And then we have a skate, the fish, with tails. And on the tails, we have a poison uh, claws. And it's, I think it's uh, not hard to, to imagine that maybe a walrus visit this place out there. And some local people 
that had never heard about walrus saw something with big teeth and they tell others and so on and it changed to a monster. But it's also in our subconsciousness, I would say, because we have, just as uh, in other places where you have some kinds of uh, tales and, and some mysterious things, you, you have these taboos, usually. One thing that if you go to a person here in the region and, and you ask, uh, can I have a trout from the lake? Or you will probably get the answer, no, 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 the trout from this, this Lagerfield lake, it's, it's unedible. It's uh, so bad tasting and so you don't want that. But uh, that is not the fact. I mean, the trout from the lake, it, uh, the meat of the trout is a little bit lighter because of the color of the lake, but uh, it's, it's not bad fish f to eat. And then the other thing is that, uh, why are no boats on the lake? Well, you haven't seen any boats on the lake. Then you get the explanation, oh, the waves, the waves of the lake, they are extremely sharp. They are much sharper on this lake than any other lake you can find. So you shouldn't go out on a boat to this lake. I think that in Japan, as in Iceland, uh, there are a lot of myths. And uh, I believe that uh, when you have a monster video, you have to have a myth to go along with it. And here, that happened. And I think that explains why this video that Kjörtur captured has gotten so much attention, international attention, and maybe especially from Japan, because they have similar myths. At some point, a TV crew came in from uh, the United States and they did all sorts of tests. I think that the tests that the American crew made uh, don't prove that uh, the video that Hirsch took is fake. It only proves that uh, debris floating in the river can look like uh, a monster swimming, but that doesn't tell us anything about what Hirsch actually captured on his film. And what about the strange phenomenon captured on camera in Birgir Bragason's car? The video that the girl shot of some phenomenon, something happening on the lake, uh, I think it's just some weather ph phenomenon. It's a little cyclop going over the water. You see it inland where the, it, it moves over land, taking up dust and so I, I think we can we have a uh, natural explanation. I believe that uh, we have uh, two types of uh, worms in the lake. There's the old uh, six or seven hundred year old uh, giant monster that might be living there, but I, I doubt it. And then there is the undiscovered uh, organism. Uh, I don't believe in the six or seven hundred year uh, giant monster but I don't want to rule out that there might be an undiscovered uh, life form living in the silt at the bottom of the lake. Ultimately, until proof of Lagerflotermuren's existence is produced, strange phenomena observed on the lake will continue to fuel belief in the legends of this rich region of Iceland. The children of the city of Eulstador have a particularly fertile imagination. How could it be otherwise, given that their school is located just across from Lake Lagerflot? I think young, pe young children, they believe very clearly in it. They absolutely believe that the worm is alive. And I asked my son that is eight years old, do you believe in the, in the worm? Yes, absolutely, I believe in it. I, I know it exists, and, and he described it for me, what it looked, look, looked like. So it's very, very clear in his mind. Uh, it's important because it's part of the community and part of our history, and it's linked with the, with the imagination of the kids when they do arts or drawings, something like that, they often uh, draw the, the worm and they, it helps 
them with them with their imagination and it comes out uh, in that way and we use the saga when we teach them about the area history of the area it starts with uh, her there was a little girl and her mother gave her a little gold ring that she was they she opened the box and she was very afraid then the worm began to grow and he grew bigger and bigger here here he threw the box in the lake and now here this is for the end of the story I think it's very important because when I was a child, uh, I was born here in the neighborhood. Uh, we really believed uh, there were a monster in the lake. And we always were, were beware of it. And it was like part of the nature and very exciting. We are trying to keep it alive because, uh, uh, of course, it's nice to have uh, a monster because uh, it's uh, today it's not eating people anymore <laughs> so you don't need to be afraid of it this thing is made from clay and this is uh, special for me because my daughter was very young she was in second class and she decided to make lavlos arm and i did not tell her to make lavlos arm it's, uh, it was her, her decision. It's not not big deal. It's it's not big deal. There are trees here around us, and there, it's also not big deal. There's mountain and there's lake and there are houses and and we have this environment, and we have also this creature in in the lake, and it's not big deal. It's just a common thing. In our, in our life. Flotermuren plays an important role in the cultural and folk identity of this part of the country, where residents treat the mythical creature with great respect. There is no talk here of making a promotional or commercial effigy to attract tourists. Main reason I think Icelandic people come to visit Flotsalsjerad is it's so green. We have the trees here that. Most part of Iceland, they don't have as much trees as we do here. People love to visit because it's it's a great destination for families and it's it's it has a beautiful scenery. People travel to the area. They do know that the lake is home of the Laaflots worm because it's a really popular children's story and. Probably most of Icelandic people have heard the story at some point in their life. And we use it as our symbol for the municipality. And that tells us how, how, how important he is for us. And you also have seen, see artworks, several artworks in Eilstad and, and this area that, uh, that are, are formed as a worm. The poem uh, is about the Lagerflots worm. It's tied to Husatanki over there where the poem lived. So it was a very real thing to him, or, or at least he thinks a lot about it. And uh, my daughter took this poem and made a tune and played it on a piano, and my wife and do second daughter sing it, performed it in the church in Eilstad last year. I think it's just an indication of that. Everybody knows about the verb. Everybody looks at the lake when they're driving around it, uh, hoping to see some, something or expecting. So, so the worm is very much alive today.
Despite its seclusion, the valley in Iceland's eastern region attracts more and more tourists each year. The city of Eyjustador is essential since it is the only major metropolitan area around the lake. And it could be that the images of the giant worm circulated on social networks partly explain the recent increase in the number of visitors. Tourists are coming to Iceland mainly because of the nature. That is, that is the statistic says, says so. And then the second thing is the, is the culture and heritage. But people here, I think they realize that, okay, uh, maybe, maybe people are more interested in something like our worm monster than we, than we thought, actually. Meet the Locals is a, is a, is a prod or program that we are doing, Tanne Travel, with uh, local people in, in East Iceland, where we like, uh, invite people to come um, as guests and, and saying goodbye as friends. Uh, we invite people to, to local homes, where they can either have dinner or coffee and, and uh, a chat with local people how it is to, to live here in the area and our tour around the lake, life around the monster lake, offers you to, to uh, yeah, see the monster, if you're lucky or not lucky, and to, to meet local people and ask them by yourself how it is to, to live by the lake. Eyjolstadur is also the site of several annual festivals celebrating the cultural heritage of Eastern Iceland. The possible existence of a strange creature in Lake Lagerfloat provides a pretext to hold the region's most important annual festival, Orum Teiti, which opens with a big party. Each August, visitors from across the country come to attend the parades, concerts and cultural events that animate the city for an entire week. Whatever reason brings you to this unique area, make sure to always have a camera on hand. The tourists that visit the lake area uh, through us are mostly from, from uh, the UK and uh, America. But we also have a lot of people from Germany. And we get uh, many requests from both Canada, we've had requests from Mexico, Australia. No, no, I haven't ever seen a script. Og ekkert sem að tengist því annað en þetta. En frá því ég kom hérna fyrir meir en hólri öld, þá hef ég oft heyrt talað um skrimslið. Þetta er, ég hef lesið margar gamlar sögur um skrimslið. Ormurinn hann er menningasögulegt fyrirbæri hér en slóðir. Og ég held að trúi margir, flest allir hér, hér að búar að ormurinn sé til. When you come to the, the lake area here, on the lake district here, it's, uh, I think you should uh, always be aware that there might be something moving under the surface of the lake. And just very, very occasionally, it occurs above the surface. So you should always have your camera ready.